Welcome everyone to the Community Infrastructure Service Committee meeting today. Let me, I'm going to proceed to do this through electronically, so please have some patience with me as I... Okay. So we have no items of consent, so the first item up for discussion is item number one, on-street parking regulation on Fisher Court. and. Uh, Mr. Carmichael, are you are you here to present? Proceed. Yes, uh, thank you through you, the chair, to the committee. Uh, we received a, a call from a local resident on Fisher Court uh, a few months ago, concerned about the, the width of the roadway when traveling through the curve on this court, um, and asked that parking be prohibited on one side to allow for safer two-way traffic through that curve. As a result, staff followed up with a resident survey. We issued surveys to 11 in residents, and we didn't, resi or we didn't survey everybody on, on the court, but we did survey the 11 residents that are in the area of the curb where we're proposing to prohibit the parking. From that survey, we received three responses, two in favor of the uh, no parking prohibition, and one uh, opposed, wanting to remain uh, to maintain three-hour parking on both sides of the street through that curve. From that input uh, and recognizing the potential safety concerns on this curve, as well as uh, there's a bit of a grade going through this curve, that uh, we present this report recommending the prohibition be put in place. Thank you, Mr. Carmichael. We do have some questions. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Please. Okay, sorry. Please. Forgive me, I forgot about that. Uh, we do have one delegation, and it's Heather Lang. Okay. You, she wants to speak on your behalf. You, okay, Councilor Fernandez is speaking on your behalf. Uh, Councilor Fernandez, you have five minutes as any other delegation. Thank you. Um, yes, I just spoke to uh, Ms. Lang, and she said she didn't feel that she needed to come as a delegation. We're both on the same table. Um, with this. Um, myself and my husband went out and spoke to every single household except for two and uh, the majority of people do not want this and Miss Lang lives at 33 Fisher Court and uh, she has never seen a problem with this issue. The, re the original complaint came out of uh, a problem that has occurred on the street with uh, a couple of neighbors who are in disagreement as well as a situation where one of the residents had a very ill mother. There was a number of visitors that, had, that were uh, coming onto the street. The mother um, subsequently passed away and so there was a, an awful lot of traffic during a short period of time. So uh, walking on that, on that street even in icy conditions, um, there was really nobody who was saying except for these two people who said that they wanted uh, no parking on the street. So I would like to um, recommend that we do not prohibit parking on this street, um, I, uh, I th especially the fact that the, peop the two people who would be affected by the parking the most have no problem with people parking in that area. So I'd like to uh, not support this recommendation by staff. Okay. Councillor Kelly Galloway Sealock. Yeah, I just have a question of staff if that's what we're doing now. Yes, you may proceed with that. Uh, my only question is um, why we're only choose only to solicit information from 11 of the houses on that street. Through the chair, um, it's a typical process for us when we do parking surveys. We try to limit the survey on the uh, the area of the roadway that's being impacted. Generally speaking, the majority of our surveys are affecting an entire block or an entire roadway, so we'll survey everybody. In cases where we're doing isolated proposed parking prohibitions through a curve, for example, like this one, we'll limit the, uh, the input from the residents directly affected. We'll typically go about two houses either side on both sides of the street and, and seek uh, input from them. That's, that's our typical, like that's typically what we do? For isolated parking prohibitions like this, yes. I think that's something that potentially, uh, this might be more of a comment, but something that we potentially need to look at, especially when you're dealing with a street of this nature where there's only, you know, 20 some houses. Um, I think it impacts more than just uh, two, two on either side. So maybe that's something for a discussion at a later date, but um, that's. Mayor Zare. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> do we have the addresses of the two who were opposed? Yes, I do. 
Can we tell up there? Address 14 and 18. 14 and 18. It'll okay. be right at the very top of your, uh, of the plan in the back of the report. Yes, okay, I see that. Thank you. Uh, I think, too, that um, when we're surveying uh, a, a relatively short street, uh, it affects uh, pretty well everyone on, uh, potentially affects everyone on the street. And so I think it would be best to uh, be circulating the, the questionnaire a little wider. And in a survey like this, in particular, those who, who are beyond the, uh, the curve, uh, because it's those who are beyond the curve that are uh, having to navigate by that uh, area. Those at the beginning, not so much. Um, and the result may have been exactly what Councilor Fernandez uh, found out. I don't know, but I think in the earlier stage. Uh, so I'm not even questioning that part of it. I think we also should have some lessons learned here um, that in the future, in our planning for parking, that we take note of these sorts of things when there is a, um, either on a drive street or a court, that in fact we consider the issue of uh, potentially no parking on the inside uh, of those curves because I think that is uh, potentially a problem and particularly in winter. And I don't know the circumstances as, as uh, Councillor Fernandez found it. I'm just talking about it in principle right now, I think that that should be taken into consideration earlier on from a lessons learned. Um, I was prepared to uh, support the recommendation here, uh, notwithstanding the fact that it wasn't a large number of people, because I do think that this sort of thing is a potential danger point. However, given the, uh, the results that uh, Councilor Fernandez has uh, come forward with, I will uh, not be supporting the recommendation and it will be to leave it as it is. We don't have any further questions to staff, so Councillor Davey has a, has a comment to make. Yeah, I just wanted to comment quickly. I wanted to commend Councillor Fernandez as the ward councillor because I was looking at this and I was thinking if this was in the ward I represented, I probably would have, I would have gone and talked to the residents. So um, it paints a very different picture and I will be supporting, um, or I will not be supporting the recommendation. Thank you. Yes, uh, I'm going to... Councillor Fernandez? Do we, do we, I'll put the motion on the floor because essentially uh, if we don't support it, we just say no. And if we do support it, then we'll say yes, right? Yeah. Okay, so... Hmm? But we can just, you can just vote to say take no, put a motion to take no action. Okay, well, why don't I do that? Um, okay. I would prefer to have a motion on the floor that says we take no action okay. and that we... Uh, leave the existing rules as they are. Parking. Okay. And I don't see any more questions or comments. With that, we'll take the, the vote. All those in favor? And I'm in favor as well. It looked like it was carried unanimously. I hope that's satisfactory. <laughs> okay. So the next item up on uh, the agenda is item number two, uh, Guelph Street traffic calming review. And uh, we'll have Mr. Carmichael again uh, make his presentation. Go ahead, Mr. C Mr. Carmichael. Uh, thank you, through you, the chair to the committee. Uh, in typical traffic calming process, staff had, re had received requests over the years, uh, concerns about traffic on Guelph Street. Uh, as a result, through through the priority reports that the council approved, Guelph Street was initiated for a traffic calming review and we have completed that review. Through the, through the review of Guelph Street for traffic calming and, and our public meetings with the residents, uh, it's important to note that the traffic calming plan that we are proposing will be tied into the roadway reconstruction of Guelph Street, which is scheduled uh, in a couple of years down the road. So there's efficiencies to be gained there. But as far as the public input on the plan goes, we received a good, fairly good uh, attendance at the public meetings and good interest, uh, confirming the issues. And through the final survey, you'll notice in the report, we did execute the final survey. We did not receive the minimum response rate, that being the minimum 50% responding. 
but we certainly got in ex excess of the, uh, the minimum support rate of 60%. In this case, we've got over 80%, 41 of the 49 respondents were in favor of the plan. Um, it's probably important to note that through typical road reconstructions, transportation services staff do review the road before engineering go in and do the design. And we take that as an opportunity to do improvements on the roadway, uh, whether it be traffic calming measures or other measures that can assist with safety in the area. And just through a typical review, should there not have been a traffic calming review for Guelph Street, we would have looked at um, measures similar to what we're proposing through this plan, that being a number of road narrowings at the side streets. And we have one, one vertical measure proposed at the raised crosswalk by Edwin Street. There's a, uh, that's a defined school route with a, with a safety patrol crossing there. Uh, so we see the, the benefit to having the raised crosswalk to increase safety at that location. While the remainder of the roadway that's being reconstructed, we're proposing parking bays to be developed. What that does is it clearly defines where the parking is on the street, but, but more importantly, it allows us to provide a narrower roadway through the intersections, uh, thereby having a calming effect on the traffic. It's important that this is also important to note that this is also a key corridor for cycling, and we are proposing uh, cycling lanes through or cycling facilities through this through this uh, corridor, uh, with the potential of possibly adding sharrows through here. But uh, we wanted to maintain the narrow widths for to have the positive impact on vehicle speeds. And with that, I'll leave that with the committee. And okay. Answer any questions well, you may have. Thanks, Mr. Carmichael. We do have a delegation here today, uh, Chris and Tracy Bennett. Just wanted to remind the delegation you do have five minutes to uh, to plead your case. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you, members of council, for hearing my thoughts, particularly to the newest and most calmest member. Um, and uh, thank you to the department for all the great work. I'm a beneficiary of the calming. Uh, we uh, own the, the old number two fire station on Guelph Street. And uh, the, uh, the raceway that was Guelph Street is no longer. Uh, our clients can now back out of the driveway safely. And uh, we're certainly very supportive of all the good work that's been done on the calming review. But I did notice uh, on uh, just lately, because I took more of an interest in, in, the, uh, in the traffic in the area, I did notice one thing that uh, I have some concern, and I just wanted to raise it as a, perhaps a thought or a consideration. And because our building is directly beside the, uh, the walkway where the crosswalk exists today uh, on Edwin and Guelph, um, two of my staff, uh, their windows are adjacent to that walkway. And I was curious about the traffic count, and by no means is this a scientific study, but just over the last few weeks, I asked them to uh, count the, the traffic, the, uh, the children that are walking by. And it's very low uh, today, as an example, it was zero. Uh, no foot traffic on the path. And I've, I've known the crossing guard for a while. He's a great fellow, and I've asked him what's happening there. And it seems like a lot of the children are using St. Leisure as the main corridor. Uh, and then they're walking down Guelph, if I sh uh, or uh, shall I say eastward on Guelph, to get down to the crosswalk, and then they cut back up toward the school. Um, of particular interest is the, the new, and again, we're very thankful for it, the new four-way stop at St. Leisure and Guelph. Uh, that's done a tremendous job at slowing the traffic and uh, creating additional safety. And I guess given the numbers that I'm seeing in terms of the children that are using the crossway um, beside our building, or the walkway, pardon me, and the crosswalk uh, in front, I pulled up a number of studies I think I pulled six in total. I'll, I'll, they're parallel, I guess, in terms of their comments. These are traffic studies related to crosswalks specifically. And I'll read something very quickly from a Federal Highway DOT study. Many jurisdictions also commonly install marked crosswalks at school crossing locations, especially where adult crossing guards are used. And, of course, that fits our example. And they are more likely to mark crosswalks at intersections controlled by a stop sign at uncontrolled locations, some agencies rarely, if ever, choose to install marked crosswalks. So I, again, looking at the numbers and looking at the traffic patterns, talking to some of the local parents and the crossing guard, and, and just, again, anecdotal observations of, of how the children are getting to and from school, it seems like St. Leisure, again, is the, is the main corridor. And uh, with that four-way stop, and given the, uh, the many reports that suggest that a four-way stop or a controlled intersection is the best place for a crossing guard, I'm wondering if it could be considered that uh, the, the crossing guard and the crosswalks be moved to St. Leisure and Guelph, where it would be uh, 
uh, more controlled, more safe, and more indicative of perhaps of the actual foot traffic that exists today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. We do have some questions for you from council, from committee. Councillor Glenn Graham. You shut your shell on. Thanks, Mr. Bennett. I appreciate that. In terms of the move that you're proposing to St. Leger, uh, is that based on anecdotal evidence of the numbers of people crossing at that area? What's that based on? Yeah, we're, I, two of my staff have uh, offices with windows facing the crosswalk. So right. again, it's not scientific. I, we right. haven't conducted our own study no, by any fine. means, but they're there early and they're there after the hours that the children return. So I asked both of them just over the last couple of weeks to keep track. You can obviously see the kids walking past. And uh, there are days when we can count it on one hand. Today was a zero this morning. No children used the, the walkway at all. Uh, now, uh, of interest again, today at zero, I talked you know, quickly to the crossing guard in instances before when it was zero. And he says they're either, they're either coming westbound or eastbound following Guelph Street to get to him to make the cross, when in fact they seem to be either crossing further down or, for, or, or more likely more on St. Leisure with the, 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 the traffic to, um, to Margaret. Right. And there's traffic also going the other direction, kids walking to Blue Vale. It seems like that's the main corridor for the kids. So uh, that along with... Uh, the fact that the, the speed now is so much less because of that four-way stop. Again, we're so thankful to have it. Uh, and looking at some of these studies, it seems like it's uh, at, at, at a, uh, a crosswalk that's working against the grain of traffic makes mm -hmm. no sense. You would put a crosswalk where there's a full stop. That would make more sense. So while I have you there, are, do you have any other comments on the changes that are here, including bike lanes or anything else? Uh, we're one of the ones that uh, support it. I think it's wonderful, all the work that's been done to calm Guelph Street. It was very dangerous up to this point with the speeds. And uh, to hear that uh, we'd have bicycles, and now that the speed has been lowered, I'm very supportive of everything in the, uh, in the proposal. It's been good work. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Thanks for coming yeah. today. Councillor Davey. Thank you for coming in your presentation. I just have one question. I'm, I'm not sure we're going to go until I hear from staff on this, but uh, one of my concerns is the crosswalk, crosswalk being raised uh, in light of um, there being a fire station nearby. Um, do you have any concerns if the crosswalk was not raised, if it was kept at level, as long as it was marked clearly? Um, the, the crosswalk in its current location, whether raised or not raised, and I think some of those studies that I was reading over the weekend seem to support it, um, because the crosswalk is now against the grain of traffic, I don't think it makes much difference and the studies sort of bear that out, whether it's raised or not raised, even to the point of whether it's lit or not lit with, an, with a large overhang. It doesn't seem to uh, statistically much, much more difference in terms of the overall safety. What the studies were saying was that because there is no stop sign, there's no full stop for traffic, and that crosswalk is against the grain of traffic, uh, particularly in this instance, if today you went out and took a look at the, the snow piles and the, the narrowness of Guelph, uh, it's a very difficult crosswalk to see, and there's nothing else to, uh, to you know, if they miss the sign, there's no reason for the traffic to slow. So, uh, and the same exists to access the crosswalk along our building to get, uh, sorry, the walkway, to get to the crosswalk on Edwin and Guelph. You also have to, as a child, cross against the grain of traffic with no stop sign and no support on Blucher. So to get to the crosswalk, to use the walkway, you also have an uncontrolled intersection on Blucher. So it's sort of a double jeopardy. And that's why I'm thinking with St. Leisure, every intersection along St. Leisure, all the way along is controlled by a stop sign. And uh, the traffic flows there are, are uh, uh, you know, as a, as a neighborhood, uh, everyone obviously obeys the stop signs pretty well. But at Edwin and at Blucher, where we access the walkway, there is no control, no stop sign, and traffic flows freely. So. Where there is a crossing guard, certainly to help the children in the front of our building, there is no crossing guard at the rear of the building. The kids walk uh, blindly across traffic. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. We don't have any further questions thank for you. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Thank you again. And is someone prepared to move, move the recommendation or make a recommendation? Okay. You will have a question, Mayor Zaire? Question of staff, yes. Okay, go ahead, Mayor Zaire, sorry. Um, I'd like to um, have staff's comment on the, the issue of moving the, uh, the crosswalk uh, to St. Ledger. Just to make sure that I'm on the right page here as well. St. Ledger is, although it's, it's not written here, is where the stop is now. Okay. Yeah, through the chair, we, before, through the uh, traffic calm review, we were actually 
we're already studying the intersection of St. Ledger and Guelph. And through the review, we, we determined that an all-way stop was warranted there, and we did put it in place. And that, that's a product of the delegation's comments, uh, and the comments are appreciated. Um, as far as relocating the crossing guard, uh, I would appreciate uh, s some time for staff to go back to, to speak to our supervisor of crossing guards, to speak to the schools, and just get a better handle himself on exactly on the, the patterns in that area. Um, based on what the delegation's comments are, I can appreciate the request, and, and if there's better efficiencies for us to locate our guard in a better location, then, then obviously we're, we're right on board with that. So in this regard, I would, uh, before, I would, I would ask that we be able to report back on this issue before a final determination is made on the race crosswalk. If that were done, Mr. Chair, I, I would suggest that um, that would impact, that would, could potentially impact our decision on this matter. So uh, I know there are perhaps other questions, so I'll, I'll hold off, but I think it would be prudent to defer this uh, until we have that additional information. Okay, that's noted. Maybe there are other points of um, interjection. Okay. Councillor Glenn Graham. Thank you very much. No, that makes sense. A deferral is something that um, I think makes sense. And I was wondering about this, and I didn't want to put uh, you on the spot, Mr. Carmichael, but um, I also was interested in your take on, on the delegation's proposal. The other thing I wanted to ask was, um, in terms of the, the volumes, do you have any anecdotal evidence or, I mean, the, the delegation talked about the volumes of people crossing. Do you have anything like that? Or I guess that would be part of your subsequent report. Through the chair, uh, unfortunately, I don't have the traffic numbers in front of me, but uh, I, I will advise that uh, the location and the provision of an adult crossing guard is based on our, our warrants for crossing guards, and it's based on traffic, and it's based on the gaps that we have in that traffic on the roadway. So before we recommend an adult crossing guard, our supervisor of crossing guard has done some studies in that area to determine what gaps are in place. Um, the delegation made reference to the children crossing Blucher. I would su submit that the, obviously the traffic volumes are significantly lower on Blucher Street and the gaps are, are more than adequate there to serve the, the children's needs. But on Guelph Street, a little higher volumes and that's why we have the crossing guard. Um, placing them at the always stop at St. Ledger, should that be what we end up doing due to the routing, um, would work just fine as well. So I'll just make a, a quick footnote to that, um, then I'll ask a couple more questions. There is a development, the uh, Victoria Common development that's going in and it's 85% sold and I think that's going to affect traffic patterns so that's a consideration in favor of, of moving the crosswalk. Um, just briefly, in terms of the, uh, the raised crosswalk issue, um, I, I see where Councillor Dave is going and not only is, is it an expense but it's a potential a barrier for the, the emergency services of the fire department in particular. Um, what's the rationale for doing that? Through the chair, uh, through tr previous traffic calm reviews and, and isolated traffic reviews, we, we have determined and, and noted the extreme benefit of race crosswalks in school zones areas or in school routing areas. Uh, they, we've installed a number of them around the city with, with great success. We get positive feedback on them positive feedback from the crossing guards working at them and, and as well from the students that are crossing them. So the benefit of them is that it narrows the roadway, which in itself is a bit of a traffic calming uh, impact, but also the, the raised feature of the crosswalk itself. Effectively, it's the same design as our speed table or speed hump and forces traffic to get down to 30 or 40 kilometers per hour while going over them. So those two calming effects of the measure allow traffic or force traffic to behave a lot better in the areas where we have the students crossings going on. So. so this would be the only vertical deflection, is that right, along this road? Through the chair, that's the only vertical measure we have proposed through, the, through this. I would suggest that if we do end up through our studies relocating the crossing to St. Ledger Street that we would uh, remove the recommendation for a raised crosswalk at this location. Okay, so that's good to know. And the bike lanes, are, are they all the way through or I know you're talking about Cheryl's at the narrower section, but uh, would the bike lanes be consistent all the way through the road? Currently our plan is to implement Cheryl's through the entire corridor on this street. Um, okay. it, it's a bit of a double-edged sword in that if we were to put the bike lanes on road, which we looked at, we effectively have to widen the road that extra three meters. So we end up with a 10 meter road instead of a seven meter road. Uh, that would have impact on residents' front yards, 
obviously all our work is still done within our right of way, but some of their boulevards might be shortened. But more importantly, the wider carriageway itself, despite the markings on the road, would still lead to higher speeds as well. In talking with our transportation demand management coordinator, uh, we're quite comfortable with the idea of Cheryl's going in through this corridor, keeping in mind that uh, the ones on King seem to be working well. We'll be doing further studies on those, and these won't be in until the reconstruction is conducted in a couple of years. Thank you. And just briefly, when is this coming back before us if with a further report? When did you think it could in the spring? Or Bear with me. Through the chair, uh, I would recommend if we could come back to, we do have March break in the middle of this. Um, we'd probably be challenged to hit the March 31st meeting. Um, if, if committee feels that's important, we could meet that, but I, don't I would think probably it's a rush. recommend the, uh, the following committee after that. I think it's important to get this right, so I would support that, whatever date you're comfortable with uh, after the March break. Thanks very much. Councillor Davey. Thank you. So has the deferral been moved? No. Okay. Not yet. Uh, I, just, I just wanted to offer a quick comment um, as if it is as I anticipate it will be deferred. Uh, yeah, just wanted to comment to staff that when they're comparing the crosswalk locations, I would be looking to not have it raised at either location when this does come back, just to take that into consideration. Uh, because this, not only is it, it's a, actually a primary response route, so I think it's that more important that we um, we'd be a level for the entire route. Mayor Zare. Okay, I would concur with the uh, the last statements about the, um, the raising, the, uh, given the uh, proximity to the fire station. So I would move that this item be deferred until the April 7th C CIS committee. Okay. Do we have any questions on the deferral? No okay. questions. With all that, we'll take a vote. All those in favor of the opposed? Motion is carried. You want to declare okay. conflict okay. item number four of the agenda? Number four on the agenda. Artisan, okay. And the reason for that is... Uh, That's fine. You, sorry. That, the reason for that is the uh, extremely talented individual is a close friend of mine, so I feel a little awkward on that. Okay. Thank you. So not, you don't have any conflicts on item number three? Okay. All right, so up next is item number three. Commission agreement of the 2013 artisan resident. We have a <laughs> we have a, a team effort up here. <laughs> you can proceed anytime. Thank you. And thank you, Chair, and to the members of Council. Um, I'm very pleased to be here today to provide a recommendation regarding the commissioning and installation of an artwork by the 2013 City of Kitchener artist and resident Susan Coolen, who's here with me today, um, as put forth by the Arts and Culture Advisory Committee as well as the Public Art Working Group. Um, Susan's going to provide a little bit of an overview of her commission proposal, but I thought I'd just hit on some of the highlights from the report that you have in front of you. Um, since the artisan residence uh, inception, artisan residence program inception in 1995, um, artisan residents have developed a commission proposal as the culmination of their year-long work as their residency, both creatively and with the community. Um, the commissions are $5,000 in value and are funded through the Public Arts uh, Trust Fund, which was established by the Lions Club of Kitchener. Uh, Susan's commission, commission builds on her project, the Literati Project, which we'll talk about a little bit further, um, by working with community centres and neighbourhood associations to develop an installation for the Forest Heights Community Centre. I thought I would just also touch on briefly the strategic alignment um, with the City of Kitchener corporate plan, um, and primarily the Artists and Residents program in the Commission uh, it contributes to quality of life by exploring and reflecting community identity, um, 
contributes positively to development by creating a creative place where creative people want to live and be, and then also contributing to a, down, to a dynamic downtown. And this, I think, is really interesting because while the artist in residence uh, shows, has a gallery exhibitions in the City Hall galleries, they also do a lot of work in the community outside of the downtown, creating a really interesting connection between what happens in our downtown and what happens elsewhere in our community. Um, so in summary, the recommendation before you is that the commissioning and installation of an artwork by the city's 2013 artist and resident Susan Coolin be approved and that further that the mayor and council be authorized to execute the artist and res resident's 2013 commission agreement with Susan Coolin. So I thought I'd let Susan just talk a little bit briefly about her commission. Welcome Susan. Thanks, thanks. It's nice to be here and to introduce myself as your 2013 artist in uh, residence and I've had a, a fabulous year. Uh, before I start I just want to say that the Arts and Culture Department and Communications have been absolutely fabulous. It's uh, been a fabulous experience. So my project for the year was the Literarity Project and this was a project that I proposed and it was thematically organized around uh, litter collections which I, I picked up off the streets of Kitchener including uh, 50 Ways to Leave Your Litter, which was a display of 2,500 pieces of litter, so it was very uh, proactive. I've cleaned up the streets while I worked. And so my project, it took the form of pop-up pop exhibits in public spaces, information exhibits at City Hall, uh, uh, displays in the cases, um, uh, about thir 12 or 13 litter collecting events with community centers and, and citizen groups and uh, finally artist books and a series of um, framed works which showed at the December Rotunda exhibit. And that's a series of uh, uh, 12 large works and four small works uh, that are sort of a graphic culmination of, of all the materials that I gathered and worked with. And uh, those are the works that uh, are being accepted by the Forest Heights Community Center. and. Uh, they're very happy, from what I can tell, to have these. And, uh, you know, I've met uh, and talked with them, and I'm really, really pleased that they want that in their community. And so that's a visual. Uh, we've talked about the placement, where they'll go, and that's a sort of an accordion-style uh, presentation that um, more about how it's going to hang, but uh, those works uh, will be there in the center. And I'm also looking forward to kind of adding some extra incentives for them to introduce my project into possible art projects they might do and that's you know uh, a really lovely thing this is my first public uh, participation event like this you know i usually work very solitary and so it's it's really gratifying to have participated in this to work with the city and to have spoken to so many people in this city throughout the year and uh, so thank you. Thanks for this terrific opportunity. We don't have any questions, so I'll just make my own. Oh, Mayor's there. Thanks. I don't have any questions on this, but there's one point in the, because I support it, it's, it's great. Uh, but I do have a question in terms of the, um, of the, no, the public arts, the Public Arts Trust Fund, which was established by the Lions Club of Kitchener. Can you give us the history of that? Do you know it? Because um, I have to admit that my mind has gone totally blank on the Lions' involvement with that. Can you help us out? Through the chair. Um, I will, from, from my understanding, the Lions Club um, provided funds for a trust to support public art at City Hall. And the first piece that resulted in that um, was horsepower, which is the, the large piece um, facing Duke Street. And so the, that funds, those funds from uh, the Lions Club are support um, the commissions from the artists and residents, and that's really solely how it's been. Okay, used. so I, w I was aware of that, obviously the commissioning there, um, but this is the funds that are still remaining in that that fund. Is that correct? Through the chair, that's correct. Okay, that's. Tying it into that then brings back my memory. Thank you very much. We have another. 
Okay, Councillor Galloway, see that, please. No, I don't have any questions, but I saw there was nobody else in the queue, so I'm prepared You're to move the uh, recommendation uh, from staff. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to make my one quick comment and just, oh, Councillor, go ahead. Sorry, I just wanted to make a quick comment. Yeah, go ahead. It's amazing what you've done, Susan, with your $5,000 and your inspiration. And I think you're a great eco-warrior in a sense that you're, you're basically modeling a behavior that we're, we're always talking about and a philosophy of, of way of looking at the world. And you're also enhancing a community center. So I think it's, it's great that you're doing this and I'm really pleased to see it. And I think it's, it's gonna be really leaving a great legacy for a long time. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I, I just want to echo those same comments and uh, on behalf of our committee as well. We appreciate everything that you've done and, and thank you and for making our, our community vibrant and uh, beautiful to look at. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Galloway, okay. All right. With all that, we'll take a vote. All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Next item up, I guess you're not going to go too far, eh, Emily? <laughs> Is uh, the 2014 Artist in Residence appointment. And you, you may proceed. Thank you. Um, it is again my pleasure to present to you a recommendation um, that Dwight Storing be appointed the 2014 City of Kitchener Artist in Residence as put forward by the Arts and Culture Advisory Committee and the Public Art Working Group. Um, again, as Susan did, Dwight will provide a little bit of an overview of his project, Neighborhood Voices, um, but I thought I'd just um, provide a summary of the report. Um, the Artist in Residence program, which we were just discussing, was the first program of its kind um, to be in a municipality. And since 1995, we've had a huge emphasis on community engagement um, in the act of creating artistic production and then also in interpreting it. So one of the goals of the program is to connect with as many people as possible um, for the artists in residence and to connect with them in a really engaging and meaningful way. And I think you'll see from Dwight's proposal um, that, that it's very clear as to why he was selected by the Public Art Working Group. The process for the selection of Dwight as the 2014 Artist in Residence um, is outlined in the report but involves a detailed call for entry and a jury process that is administered by the Public Art Working Group. In terms of alignment, um, very similar to the previous report, but I think it bears repeating, that, um, that Dwight's work in the Artist in Residence program has a huge role to play in fostering belonging and pride um, in terms of quality of life. And in terms of development, this idea around creative placemaking and seeing a community that really values that and how that then translates to talent attraction. In terms of downtown, Dwight's project will really be focusing on connecting downtown to other parts of the community and really focusing on how to engage folks from across um, our city. In terms of financial implications, there is $7,500 in the arts and culture operating budget that's allocated to this project. In, sum in summary, the recommendation before you is that Dwight Storing be appointed the City of Kitchener Artist in Residence for 2014, um, as recommended by the Arts and Culture Advisory Committee and the Public Art Working Group. So I thought I'd pass it over to Dwight for a moment to talk a little bit about his project. Welcome, uh, Dwight. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. And uh, thank you, members of Council and, uh, and uh, Mr. Chair. Um, the, um, this, is a, this is a really exciting project for me. Uh, as a community-based artist, it's rare that you get an opportunity to work on a sort of a citywide scale. Um, one of the projects that I'm starting actually on Friday is, is uh, sort of a, a reflection of this, and it's a project that could and, and uh, would and should, I suppose, uh, be integrated into this, uh, this residency. And that's uh, working with a group of students at uh, KCI. Uh, they're photography and graphic arts students. And we'll be exploring uh, downtown Kitchener uh, using a project that I did uh, in 2012 with the city called Made in Kitchener, which explores the uh, personal stories of uh, people who worked in the manufacturing sector in the post-war era. And um, it's these, these kinds of interactions between uh, regular people, ordinary people, and the place in which we live that I think is at the heart of what I do. 
Um, I think there's quite a few uh, details in uh, your uh, information packages uh, about what the project entails, but in a nutshell, uh, throughout uh, 2014, I'll be working with the community centres throughout the uh, city, the 14 community centres, uh, nice synergy between 2014 and 14, um, uh, as a focal point to gather the stories and uh, record the stories of everyday people, and then to weave those stories into uh, a collaborative documentary film that captures life in Kitchener in 2014. I think meeting these everyday people is really the most exciting piece of this project for me. I've uh, lived in Kitchener longer than any place else in the world. I've been here about 30 years. And I realized as I was putting this proposal together just how much uh, a part of my mind and, and what a close place in uh, my heart the city actually has. And so going out and connecting with those people and, and actually creating something that records this kind of uh, moment in time is, is something that I think is, uh, is going to be uh, very fulfilling for me. And I hope uh, fulfilling for the people that I work with. Uh, the second thing that I think is really exciting and I think is unique to Kitchener is the, the artistic opportunity that exists in this community to connect with uh, the technology sector. And uh, as a starting point for that, I'm going to be working with, at the Felt Lab in uh, St. Jacobs, uh, and that's with the Research Entrepreneurs Accelerating Prosperity. Uh, you may know it as REAP. And that will be using uh, local technologies to actually create a different way in which to view the outcome of this. So these, this way would be uh, perhaps interactive. People would be able to to actually control uh, aspects of this and see what they're seeing. And so I would invite you as, uh, as uh, representatives of the people, if you have opportunities where these interactions could be shown in your ward, I would welcome uh, the opportunity to do that going forward. So uh, in summary, I am looking forward to uh, a very uh, interesting year of exploring uh, the place where I live. Thank you. Thanks, Dwight. Uh, we do have some questions or, or comments. We'll take those as well. Councillor Fernandez. Thank you. Um, you really ca you caught my attention when I was reading the, uh, the report about uh, storytelling and, and, uh, and, and talking to people about where they live. I think that's really such an important, uh, the perfect example was just previous to this um, when I talk to the people about the parking issue on, on the little court. And, uh, you know, we always go out before an election, we talk to everybody, but this was an opportunity to engage people. And I really like the idea that you're going to be engaging people about the city and the place that they live and what do they love about it. So a couple of questions. Um, how will you gather these people? And, and you said something about community centres, but you were also talking about another location, so... Okay, uh, there, I, there are two ways in which uh, I will be engaging with people. Uh, first of all, I'm, going to, I'm planning to hold three story gathering uh, sessions. Uh, the locations haven't been decided yet. There'll be three locations in the city in which people will be invited to come and contribute their story to the project. And usually that's a, a kind of a workshop environment in which people explore their, their neighborhood uh, through mapping, through uh, speaking uh, about their experiences in the neighborhood, talking about favorite places, favorite people, people who make the best lasagna, that kind of thing. Uh, the other way in which uh, I'll be engaging with people will be uh, more a, in a traditional documentary uh, filmmaking style where I'll be actually going uh, out to the community centers and seeking out people who are willing to be interviewed uh, and be uh, a part of the video uh, project. And those people, I, I'm, I'm thinking that those people will be the people who will be uh, sort of celebrating their life in some way. It might be the first day of school, it might be a birth, it might be uh, a birthday. It will be actually seeking these, these people out and, and gathering their stories in a more traditional mediated method. Okay, that sounds really interesting. Um, 
so I'd like to invite you to Ward 4's community center if you're interested. Um, kind of knew that was coming, I bet, um, because we only have one community center in a very large ward. So certainly, you know, I'd love it if we could interact and discuss about that. Um, the the other thing too that I was, will you be looking at certain segments of 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 the community, or really just random and in, in hopes that um, you'll be able to get a real cross section? Uh Actually, what I, I'm hoping that I will be able to depend on the community centers to, to help me understand the character of each area that they serve. And I know a number of the community centers have um, maybe more than one neighborhood. Like, for example, the downtown community center serves a different, uh, different neighborhoods. But understanding the character of, of these neighborhoods, I think, is one of the, the, the things that I hope that the community centers will be able to help me with. Um, I think an overarching framework is uh, is the will be uh, that idea of uh, the cycle of life, mm -hmm. and so uh, we'll be I'll be looking for the character of the neighborhood and then finding ways to integrate that into a larger uh, larger narrative framework. It sounds like a very interesting project, and I, I, again, I love the I love the idea about engaging people because. Um, quite often, people don't always want to tell you their story, but once they start, once you ask those questions, those probing questions, all of a sudden you get this flood of a story. So, um, again, I, I look forward to, to seeing you at the Dune Community Pioneer Park Center, if that's your wish. Absolutely, I will. I, my intention is to visit every community center. Okay, thank you. Councillor Galloway Sealock. Yeah, no, I'm just prepared to move the recommendation. Okay. Councillor Glenn Graham. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm really pleased, Dwight, that you're here. And it sounds like an exciting project. And I just wondered, I hate to ruin the symmetry of your 14 and 14, but wondering if you considered the Kitchener Market as another opportunity for storytelling. There's both an upstairs and a downstairs area. And there's some really fascinating characters and stories there. Uh, well, absolutely. I, I'm not... Uh, I'm not uh, shutting out any locations. Uh, right now, I have some other ideas in mind. I think, as I say, the community centers are kind of a focal point or a starting point, but definitely the market is one of the places that's, uh, that's rich in uh, history and uh, stories, so uh, I'll be visiting. Excellent. And uh, Emily, if you could just let us know when these uh, story sessions are. I think there's a lot of interest here. Thank you very much, Dwight. Thank you. Uh, I want to make a quick comment before we move the recommendation or vote on the recommendation. I just want to say I'm very excited for your project, Dwight. Uh, I, I think we've met, we've met a few times at some of the film organizations, uh, and I, I think this is a great avenue to tie in the entire community and to showcase some of the talent that we have in this community, in particular with film. So I think it's it's a great endeavor, and I, I, I especially I've been I think I've mentioned this a few times in in our economic development. Um, meetings that we don't tell enough good stories about our community and what a best a good way to tell about our stories is through film and uh, and I'm, I'm glad you're here and uh, on a personal level if you need any help with your project I'd love to help you on that and uh, with that we'll take a vote all those in favor opposed thank you we look forward to seeing your work thank you and I think that is the last item on the agenda we do. Oh, so we do have uh, an information item, um, Councillor Fernandez. Just a quick question. This is sort of reflective uh, of the awards that we've done in the in the past. Is there any? I mean, I was looking for information on on the 2014 uh, pro awards. Is is that going to be coming forward? Is that expected? Like, is this just sort of a retrospective of what we did? Mr. May? Through you, Mr. Chair, yes. Uh, the short answer is it is a uh, review of uh, uh, the awards over the past. Uh, certainly we can provide council with an email in terms of what's coming up, although I'm not aware of any plans to do anything differently than what we've done previously. Okay, that's all I just needed to know. Thank you. Okay. And that concludes uh, the Community and Infrastructure Services Committee. Thank you. What's...